Barakatay Yahuwah, Barakatay Yahuwah Shai, Kol Halon Yom La Yahuwah, Baha Sham Yahuwah Shai, Baracha HaKodash, which means all praises to Yahuwah is the name of the Heavenly Father, Baha Sham is in the name, Yahuwah Shai is the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ, Baracha HaKodash means in the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, only way we can worship the Father and the Son, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel and truth and in sincerity, all in charity. Now you can see on your screen, this is the the etymon online. It's the meaning of the word purpose, right? So it's circa thirteen hundred purpose, intention, aim, goal, object to be kept in view, proper function for which something exists. <laughs> you see, so we're gonna focus on those different definitions right there, man. It says intention, aim, a goal. An object to be kept in view. And a couple of scriptures pop up in my spirit. Just reading those different definitions. So we'll just get right into it. This is the book of Matthew. Chapter 6. <clears throat> and uh, I'll start at 19. It says, lay, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. Where moth and rust doeth corrupt. And where thieves break through and steal. Exactly, man. That's going into carnal things. You see? Our aim, our goal, our intention, right? Going back to these definitions, our uh, an object to be kept in view is not carnal things, man. See, it's written in the book of 2 Corinthians. It's 2 Corinthians chapter 4 in the last verse. It says, while we look not at things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So this is our aim. This is our focus. These are the objects that need to be kept in view as these scriptures, right? Nothing carnal here on this earth. This is verse 20. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also, meaning where your mind would be at, man. You see? So going back to this definition, our purpose our intention, our aim, our goal, an object to be kept in view, the proper function for which something exists is to do what we're doing right here, man. Verse 22, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thy eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Knowing our purpose, man, you see, knowing what we're called here to do, right? We're called to uh, 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 to profess uh, uh, um, how's it worded? Let's see. It's a good one. First Timothy six and twelve. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. Right. Um. Let's see. Yep. Hebrews 10 and 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Right. So that's our job. That's what we're called to do. We're here to profess. Right. As it is written in the book of Jeremiah, the first chapter. We're here to speak the words of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah. This is the book of Jeremiah 1 and 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Right. Going back to the definition, the proper function for which something exists. We're alive. We're breathing. The Lord allows us to wake up every morning in order to what? To prophesy the downfall of this present evil world. To prophesy and to preach and to teach and to profess the glory of Yahweh, Yahweh Shah back into this earth, man. So we have to keep our eyes single. We have to know our purpose, right? As the scripture says, let's get this. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 29 and 18, where there is no vision, where there is no purpose, right? Because it goes into an aim, a goal, an object to be kept in view, so it's having that vision, right? 
So it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. You know, meaning what? Meaning these words, these holy scriptures, right? Because the whole book is the law. That's where our view, that's, that's where our hope lies, man. Right? As it is written in Colossians, let's get that. This is the book of Colossians chapter 3 and 1. It says, if ye then be risen with Yahweh Shah, seek those things which are above, where Yahweh Shah sitteth on the right hand of the Most High. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. You see? Lining up with that Matthew the sixth chapter we just read. So what it means, set our affection on things above. What does that mean? Store our treasures in heaven. What does that mean? Right? Now let's get the book of James. Um, is it the third chapter? This is James 3. Yep, verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. You see, bless all the peacemakers. And how are we making peace? We're making peace. Through our Lord Yahweh Shai, uh, 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 returning our people back to the Heavenly Father, man. You see? As Paul said in 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, I pray you, I believe it's the fifth chapter, 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. He says, um, I pray you in Yahweh Shai stead, be ye reconciled back to the Most High, man. You see? So our job through the Holy Spirit, through our Lord Yahweh Shah, is to reconcile the nation of Israel, the elect more specifically, back unto the Heavenly Father. Going back to Jeremiah, the first chapter. You see, this is our purpose. This is our aim. This is our proper functioning, right? What, what was the definition? Proper function for which something exists. This is why we exist. You see, it's written in the book of Ecclesiastes. Let's grab that. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12 and 13. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear the Most High and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. This is our purpose, man. You see, it tells us in the book of Peter, right? And uh, I like to call this scripture the blueprint. Now, this is the book of uh, 2 Peter 1, and I'm going to start at 4. It says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Yahweh Shah and Mashiach. But he that lacketh these things, right? And see, if brothers don't know what these different words mean, you're supposed to what? Go into these words, right? Look them up in the Greek. Go to the etymon. Go to the regular dictionary. Get the understanding of what these words mean so that you can start to apply it within your everyday life. You see? Verse 9, but he that lacketh these things is blind. See, he forgot his purpose. He lost the vision and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so a entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shahamashiach. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it meet as long as I am in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, man. In remembrance of our purpose. What's our goal? What is the aim? Right? It's to get delivered, man. You see? That's the purpose. That's the aim. This is the proper, what, what is it once again? The proper function for which something exists. You see? Object to be kept in view. We have to keep this in the forefront of our mind. This is why we're here on this earth. 
It's to live according to the gospel that we preach. See, it ain't just about uh, uh, talking it. It's about living it. It's about being walking examples of these scriptures, man, as it is written in 2 Corinthians 3 and 3. It says, for as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Yahweh Shai, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living power, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. You see that? So we're walking epistles, just like how Yahweh Shai is the word made flesh. Well, we're a part of his body, man. It says that the mind that was in you, let it be also, uh, it's like it, the mind that was in Yahweh Shai, let it also be in you. I'm roughly paraphrasing the scripture. It says that we have the mind of Yahweh Shai, 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, the last verse. So we ought to um, embody these words. This is our purpose. Yahweh Shai knew what his purpose was oh, and what his purpose is. You see? So it's the same thing as us. Right. These words are speaking about us going back to that Jeremiah. That's speaking about us, man. Us brothers that's out in the highways and hedges. That's our purpose. We have to believe that. Let's go back to that Jeremiah one. Jeremiah one, I'm going to read five again. It says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. That ain't just talking about Jeremiah like some cats say. No, that's talking about all of us, man. You see, I'm going to jump down. Verse 10. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant. You see, what are we pulling down, man? We're pulling down our strongholds as it is written in 2 Corinthians. Let's grab that. This is our purpose, right? This is our aim. This is the object that needs to be kept in view. It's 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty to the, through the Most High to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of the Most High and bringeth into captivity every thought to the obedience of Hamashiach, man. You see? So we're throwing down all these lies and all the madness that was taught over the centuries. And what are we planting? What are we building? We're planting seeds of righteousness. We're building the, 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 the tower, the, uh, the defense of righteousness, man, through the Holy Spirit, through our Lord, Yahweh Shai. You see? This is our purpose, man. Right? What did, what did I, uh, the Lord tell Isaiah? Same thing. Let's get Isaiah chapter 49 and 1. It says, uh, Listen, O owls, unto me, and hawken ye people from far. Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah hath called me from the womb, from the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name. And he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand hath he hid me. He made me a polished shaft, and his quiver hath he hid me, man. <laughs> you see that? So the Lord called us to do this work. This is the purpose. This is our goal. This is the object that needs to be kept in view. So we give diligence to make our call and election sure. We study to show ourselves approved. Like it says in the book of Proverbs, it says a righteous man study if to answer. It says be ready to give an answer to every man and ask us the hope that's within us, man. You see? So we have to properly represent our Lord here on this earth, man. That's the goal. We have to live this word while preaching this word in order to get delivered from the said perils that's about to come upon this place, man. This is our purpose. This is the aim. This is the goal. You see? Verse 3. I said unto he and slow down, let me slow down. And said unto me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Then I said, I have labored in vain, I have spent my strength for naught. Right? And it feels like that at certain points, man. It's like going back to Jeremiah. He said, Lord, thou hast deceived me. I'm in derision daily. These people mock me and talk crazy against me. Right? But that goes back into what? Knowing our purpose, our aim, and our goal. You see, that comes with the territory. The scripture says that it's not, it's not you that they hate. It's me that they hate. That's what our Lord Yahweh Shah said, man. It said that the truth shall be evil spoken of. It says, he that departed from, from evil maketh himself a prey. 
So we're going to be a target. It says, yea, everyone that will live godly in this world shall suffer persecution, roughly paraphrasing. So it comes with the territory. We have to keep in mind the goal, the aim, or the object to be kept in view, right? The proper functioning, uh, I keep forgetting it, the proper function for which something exists, <laughs> you see? So it says, then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for naught and in vain. Yet surely my judgment is with Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah and my work with my power. And now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah and my power shall be my strength. You see? See, the Lord still have us out there on the highways and hedges. That means that it's people that still need to be gathered through the word. So Israel is not gathered yet. But yet those men that's out in the highways and hedges prophesying the downfall of this present evil world, giving all glory, honor, and praise to the names of Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, those men are glorious in the eyes of our Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, man. You see that? Those ones that keeping their eyes single, that staying focused on the purpose, on the goal, on the aim, right? They're glorious in His sight, man. We have to remember these things. Keep our eyes on the prize. Verse six. And he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth, man. This is our purpose, man. You see, this is our goal. Right. This is what Paul used to inspire Timothy. Let's get the book of 1 Timothy 1. And verse 17, it says, Now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise power be honor and glory forever and ever Amen. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. You see that? So Paul said, look, these prophecies, right, that were speaking about these men being raised up and prophesying and, and teaching and leading the people, right? These, these prophecies are concerning you, Timothy, right? Let's get that in another translation. This is the NIV, same, uh, same book, right? Timothy, my son, I'm giving you this command and keeping with you the prophecies once made about you so that by recalling them, you may fight the battle well. NLT. It says, Timothy, my son, here are my instructions for you based on the prophetic words spoken about you earlier. May they help you fight well in the Lord's battle. Uh, ESV. This charge I, I entrust to you, Timothy, my child, in accordance with the prophecies previously made about you, that by them you may wage the good warfare, man. You see, so all these other translations are letting it be known, right? That these prophecies was 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 concerning uh, the men who would wake up and teach and lead and properly guide the people through the spirit and power of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah. You see, that's why Paul told him in the fourth chapter. Right, let's jump over to the fourth chapter. This is First Timothy four. Let's start at eleven. These things command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth. But be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. And this is how we build ourselves up through the Holy Spirit, man. Through prayer, through fasting, and what? Giving attendance to reading, exhortation, and doctrine, right? Neglect not the gift that is in thee. Which is, what's that? The gift of faith, the gift of the Holy Spirit, right? Which was given thee by prophecy, it was prophesied that certain men would have the gift of the Holy Spirit. Going back to that Isaiah 49, going back to that Jeremiah 1, <laughs> you see? Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. That light 
unto the Gentiles, man. You see, that thy profiting may appear to all, that thy light may, might shine bright. So we have to keep in mind the goal, the focus, the purpose of why we're here upon this earth. Now, one of those definitions, right, of purpose is intention. Now, I went into that word intention as well. Now, this is the etymon for intention. It says, intention, purpose, design, aim, or object, will, wish, desire, that which is intended. Intent, purpose, aspiration. It says a stretching out, a straining, exertion, an effort. You see? It says, see, intend. Now, we go into intend. Direct one's attention to. Pay attention. Give heed to direct one's attention. From Latin, intendare, turns one attention. Strain, be zealous. It says, uh, literally stretch out, extend from in, which is toward tendere, and tendare, to stretch, to stretch toward. To stretch toward what? Now, when I'm hearing these things, other precepts pop in my spirit. This is the book of Philippians 3. And let's start at 7. It says, but what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Hamashiach. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Hamashiach, Yehoshua, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I may win Yehoshua and be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Hamashiach, the righteousness which is of the Most High by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Right. We entered into his crucifixion, as the scripture says. Right. It says, Philip was left of our Lord's uh, uh, sufferings, man. It says that if we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him together. Going back to that Colossians, it says that our life is hid. We are dead and our life is hid with our Lord. Yahweh Shah. So when he returns, which is our life. We shall, matter of fact, let me, no, no, let me click that right there. Let me go back to that Colossians. This Colossians 3, I'm going to read 2 again. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Hamashiach in the Most High. When Hamashiach, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. This is the aim. This is the purpose. This is the goal. You see? This is the function, right? <laughs> Once again, I keep forgetting it. This is the proper function for which something exists. This is why we exist. We have to believe that. We have to move according to that, right? Philippians 3 and 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after. If that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Yahweh Shai. So the Lord has called us. So we have to give diligence to make that calling and election sure. So Paul saying, look, the Lord apprehended me, meaning the Lord has possessed me to do a work. So I want to finish that work so that I'm able to apprehend the reward for doing it. You see? As John told us, man, let's get this. This is the book of uh, 2 John, verse 8. It says, look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. You hear that? So we have to keep our eyes single, man. We have to stay focused on the goal. Keep that vision. Keep that aim. Let's go back. So it says, verse 13 now, it says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. So I can't bank on my works that I did yesterday or three days ago or last week. No, what am I, what have I done for the Lord lately, each day moving forward? And we have to have that mindset, that goal, that aim, that purpose each day moving forward. Verse 14, I press toward the mark. Then that word in 10 says to stretch toward, 
right? I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of the Most High in Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if anything ye be otherwise minded, the Most High shall reveal even this unto you, man. This is the purpose. <laughs> you see? Now, I don't want to make this longer than what it is. I'm going to end it on this next precept if the, uh, if the Holy Spirit don't give me anything else. This is the book of 2 Timothy 3 and verse 10. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, right? Continue thou in the things that we have learned. It says that they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. There is one doctrine, according to Ephesians, the fourth chapter. There is one faith. There is one Lord. There is one baptism. We all got to be in the same mind and in the same judgment. Paul warned Timothy and told him not to make sure that, that people are teaching no other doctrine. Right? Going back to that second John, it says that they have not this doctrine. Bid them not Godspeed. Don't even invite them into your house. You see? Showing you the importance of teaching the truth directly and correctly, the proper gospel, right? But it says, but thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, meaning our conduct and how we conduct ourselves as ministers of the uh, of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah. It says, giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. See, we represent what's written within these pages. So we have to live according to that. You see? So it says, but thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose. You see that purpose placing of it in view. You see a purpose proposal intention goes back to those same words that we already looked up. Right. But thou hast fully known my doctrine. Right. Manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, charity and patience, man. You see. So we have to keep in mind the goal, the aim, our purpose, right? The object to be kept in view, the proper function by which one exists. This is why we're alive is to do what we're doing right now in order to uh, 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 achieve or to receive the prize of that high calling. So, Lord willing, I hope this was insightful. I hope it was uh, uh, edifying through the spirit. Yahweh for giving me spirit to do this lesson. I'm gonna give all praises, honor, glory to Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai Barakahakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel and truth and in sincerity, all and charity. Hey, shalom.